Shiny Shiny, the biggest hit for British band Hazy Fantasy. And with me now is a founding member of the trio, internationally famous photographer Kate Garner. Thank you for coming on Revenge of the 80s with me, Kate. Are you welcome? Kate, you went to school to become a photographer and worked as one before Hazy Fantasy became a reality. What got you into music? Um, well, you know, when I was um, at photography college, I was in a, a band there, but um, we didn't have a name, but we were um, playing live in the north of England. And and then when I, I came down to London, I was working in a studio. Paul Kaplan had a rehearsal studio above me, and... Um, he had a deal with EMI at that point, and he um, got EMI to put Jeremy and I in the studio to do demos. Um, and so it just music and photography was happening simultaneously. And, um, you know, with Hazy, it, it happened so fast that that took precedence. I, 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 you know, uh, the choice was made for me for a few years. I have to ask you, how did you meet these guys? How did you meet Paul Kaplan and Jeremy Healy? I met Paul because he had a rehearsal studio above the uh, photographic studio that I was working in in the east end of London. And I met Jeremy because I did a shoot for a magazine and he came um, as a hairdresser. But I, he wasn't really a hairdresser. You know, I met Paul and I was going to go into the studio to do demos and I asked him to write the songs with me. You know, he, he was working, he, he was uh, a DJ even then, so... And he just happened to be really, really good at lyrics. You know, I didn't know before I asked him. But fortunately, he was a really good writer. Now, Paul had a doctorate or something before he met you guys? Yeah, he had. Um, he um, yeah, went to Cambridge and did uh, mathematics. He studied um, a form of math- mathematics that only, I think, about four people studied in England. So, yeah, it was... Uh, well, you know, music and math are... Quite similar, I guess. Kate, how did the three of you come up with a concept for Hazy Fantasy? The clothes, the sound, and the name? I don't know. It was hard, it's hard to figure out what, you know, we didn't come up with a concept. Um, when I met Jeremy, he already had, like, one long gray dreadlock. And then I, I kind of invented this method to lock up, uh, peop, you know, uh, when you had Caucasian hair to make it dreadlock. And... Um, so we did that, and then our taste in music was very eclectic. We were listening to African music and Irish music and, um, uh, you know, bluegrass, uh, Cajun music, and um, and we were in love with the Artful Dodger, and so we, it was just a mishmash of all that, really. We didn't really conceptualize it so much as it just grew by itself, and... Um, you know, at, at that time in London, people were dressing uh, re- in a really extreme way, and Jeremy was part of um, the Blitz Kids. It, you know, it just it just all came from that. Really, we, it wasn't a concept. Kate, who were some of Hazy Fantasy's musical influences? Really, we were listening to um, uh, you know more like I guess it's called world music. Now we were listening to um, you know African music, high life, and Irish music. Uh, like, for example, uh, Faulkner Kelly, who managed Sinead O'Connor, gave me um, three CD, uh, not CD, three tapes of um, Irish um, field recordings um, and things like that. So we weren't really listening to uh, popular music. Um, I guess the only names that I can think of, um, uh, Fela Kuti, we were listening to, and Mark Boland. Mostly we were, we were listening to un- unknown artists. Now, Kate, obviously the talent was there, the creativity, the brains, everything was there, the look was there. How did you, Kaplan, and Healy get the attention of industry suits? Well, Kaplan was already signed to EMI, and so what he did, he had a rehearsal space, so he uh, brought the A&R guy down from, um, from EMI, and he uh, came and Paul played the piano, and, and Jeremy and I just sang the songs that we'd written at that point uh, with Paul and so then EMI gave us studio time and then from there Paul then went to another record label got us more studio time so we built up about six songs that were really well recorded and um, yeah and then we decided to we decided to sign to David Beckridge's label um, he had a small label he started Island Records 
um, um, so we liked what he'd done in the past, and he had this small label that was going through RCA with only about two other acts on, so we decided to go with him. And, and, and also we got a lot of press because of the way we looked. You know, cause, so when we went out, we got... There wasn't any paparazzi as such at that point, but whenever we went out, we were photographed, and then... So we were getting a lot of press um, before we got our deal. So, the, you know, the record companies uh, obviously thought that they could make money from us, and uh, it, it, it didn't seem that hard at that point. Well, dressing's nice, but you still had to have the talent. Now, Kate, you showed a very interesting vocal range in your hazy days. How you were able to switch from the sweet sound of your shiny, shiny voice to an almost sort of Dale Bozio-esque squeaky tone in John Wayne is Big Leggy, then to a stronger sort of arpeggio in Sister Friction, and sort of you run the gamut of the vocal ranges here. How did you keep that up? I, I, don't, know. I don't think that I've got a really uh, good voice. My mom had a great voice. She always told me that I couldn't sing. But um, I think that I have, um, well, uh, John, uh, uh, you know, we worked with uh, Vis uh, Tony Visconti, and he said that I had a pop voice, like a distinct, a character voice. And for him, uh, you know, he gave me a lot of confidence because for him, uh, that he said that that was um, m more interesting um, than a really, really what, what was considered a really good voice. Um, you know, it is a voice that's recognizable. So, you know, I, w I was um, pretty confident about my voice until I worked with uh, Karen Wheeler, who... Um, sang to soul to soul and her voice was so beautiful that it, she terrified me you know um um but still you know what uh i now looking back i know that tony's advice is really good that it uh, is much more important to, to have character than to have a perfect voice i think everybody can sing i don't think there's a human being that can't sing you know, it's just um, finding your voice, really. Kate Garner is with me on Revenge of the 80s Radio. The younger generation seem to enjoy the hazy fantasy songs and, and videos on YouTube, but while they enjoy the excellent threads and the catchy tunes, all of that might have disguised the profound and hard-hitting messages in your lyrics. Uh, shiny Shiny obviously had sort of an end-of-the-world uh, apocalyptic tone, maybe a war-torn theme to it. Uh, John Wayne is Big Leggy had that double entendre, obviously, but sort of offered thoughts on racism, and uh, those are just a couple of examples. How did you and the band managed to mix the artsy fun with the poignant subject matter. Well, I, you know, I think that um, you know, if you if you want to um, get a political message across, you, the best way is uh, through humor. You know, so um, people don't even notice that they're being. You know, I mean, it, otherwise it can come across as really preachy. You know, and um, you know. So you, you have to do it with humor, and it seemed the, the best way to do it is to, was to do it in sort of nursery rhyme format. Because, you know, nursery rhymes have always, well, not always, a lot of nursery rhymes have profound um, messages in them. You know, so we, we took our inspiration from that. Some of them are quite tragic, too, like the baby falling out of the tree, that one, the, the birds eating somebody's nose. That's never a lot of fun. That's just the nursery oh. rhymes for you, though. Some reports say that Healy made up the album name for Battle Hymn for Children's Singing on the spot. Now, I gotta know, is that really true? What's the real story behind the name of the of the Hazy Fantasy album? Yeah, I mean, most of the stuff just happened spontaneously. We didn't think about it, uh, you know. I, in fact, Journey can um, make up lyrics just off the top of his head. He didn't even need to write them down. And, you know, he came up with the name Hazy Fantasy. He probably came up with the name uh, Battle Hymns for Children Singing. Um, he didn't, uh, you know, he could just do it. It looks like Jeremy is the opposite of me. I stay up till 3 o'clock in the morning thinking of things like that. Is yeah, it... well, maybe you should just try, uh, I don't know, what's it called? Flow of Consciousness. <laughs> there you go. Maybe some extra sleep, too. How about that? Now, Kate, this one's for me. Strictly for me. This is the question I want to know the answer to. Where can I pick up one of those really cool Raven chess sets, like in the Shiny Shiny video? No, I have no idea. Some, you know, may, I think Paul owned that, you know. I'm, I'm not sure where that came, to, uh, came from. But, um, we definitely don't have it anymore. Yeah, the Raven was a sore and loser, none too. None of us are very good at keeping hold of our belongings. That Raven was sort of a sore loser, too, wasn't he? Yeah. You, you know, Paul directed that video. Did Paul direct most of the videos, or was it kind of a collaborative effort between the three of you? 
The first two videos we did, we did with a really big production company, um, but the second video we did with them um, cost so much money. Um, they covered this whole village with snow, and it didn't seem to be anything to do with us, and it cost so much money, which ultimately, you know, you're paying for as the artist. And so by the third video, um, which was Shiny Shiny, Paul just said, I'm going to direct this myself, you know, and he'd never directed one before. And, I mean, it's very primitive, but it, it at least said what we wanted it to say, so. Well, sometimes less is a little bit more, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. I agree. Yeah. Kate Garner is my guest. Straight ahead, we'll talk about life after Hazy Fantasy and Kate's evolution as an artist. I'm Chris Cordani. This is Revenge of the 80s Radio.